Good morning, Knicks Nation. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, it's Wednesday where I am, uh, and I hope you're COVID free. I hope you're healthy, and if and, and if you if you're sick, I hope you get better very quickly. Um, today, I'd like to discuss uh, R.J. Hampton. Now, um, before I go into detail about uh, the young man R.J. Hampton, I just want to go over a couple of basic things. Uh, number one. Just because the Knicks interview a player or any team interviews a player by Zoom doesn't mean they're going to pick that player. Because as part of due diligence, any NBA team should interview as many players as possible because you want to turn over every rock that you can to see if somebody surprises you that's different than what your scout said, different or confirms what your scouts were saying or uh, different or confirms what you're seeing with your own eyes as general manager, team president, scouts and coaches. And so you interview every player. So every time the Knicks interview somebody or they ask a player, did the Knicks interview and they say, yes, please don't make that think that that's who the Knicks are targeting. Um, Recently, there's been uh, an NBA report that the, the NBA is going to allow, I think, 10 face-to-face interviews in, in individual workouts with teams. Now, that would be more of an in indication of a team's direction. Because if, if they only have 10 shots to interview somebody in, in person or to have a workout with them, um, they're not going to waste one of those on somebody they're not really looking at the draft. And even with that, a team has to look at all the top players. If by some means or by some situation, that team, the player might fall to them. So if the Knicks were interested in LaMelo Ball, they might bring him in just in case, you know, they wanted him really bad and a deal might be done, even though nothing is set in stone. They want to know up and what they're getting. All right. So uh, the media likes to make a big deal out of the interview process and people get all hyped about it. And it doesn't really mean anything. It just means that they're looking at, they're talking to all the players. So the Knicks probably talked to at least 20 players. They probably did. They might have talked to more than that uh, via Zoom. Okay. Some players that they're definitely not interested in, they're not going to talk to. All right. Not going to talk to. Okay. So um, that's the first thing I wanted to say. Also, uh, I I get a lot of um, comments from people that are saying, look at this player. He's the next X, Y, and Z. Um, or this player is great and he would start, you know, and the thing is, is that if you look at the Knicks in their present situation with Tom Thibodeau as a coach, there's certain things, you know, before you talk about a player that you have to understand, for example, that player has to be able to play defense. If that player doesn't play defense. Don't talk about him starting with the Knicks. Okay. Because Thibodeau is going to expect defense. That's just an example. Okay. All right, so let's talk about R.J. Hampton. First, a little background. R.J. Hampton comes out of Texas. He was in high school in Texas. I think it was a Dallas area. Um, he was a high school phenom. He was a five-star recruit by uh, from ESPN. He had uh, multiple, multiple, multiple Division One offers uh, for, for basketball. Uh, he averaged over 30 points a game his last year in high school. Um, you know, stats off the charts. Uh, really superstar high school player, okay, high school player. He decided to go to Australian League and play for the New Zealand Breakers uh, of the Australian Basketball Association. So he did. He went there, and um, I can totally understand why he would do that uh, if he wants to get paid. I, you can't deny anybody the opportunity to get paid, uh, so he went to get paid for his work, so he went to Australia to play. Now, I want to also say, that the Australian League is below the NBA. Okay, it's not equal to the NBA. It's not. It's not equal at all. In fact, uh, it's probably more in line with you know some European leagues like uh, maybe the French league or the Spanish league. But it's not the NBA. So to give you an indication of what you can expect, what how somebody plays in one of these leagues, his strengths are. The strongest suit for R.J. Hampton is his tremendous speed. He is a tremendously fast. In fact, he's so fast, he looks like if he ran track, if he ran at 200 meters, he'd probably run it in 21 seconds. He's very quick. He's very, very fast. 
or on the basketball court. That's his, that's one of his, in fact, that's his greatest strength as far as what I saw when I looked at film of him. He's very, very fast. Um, gets up the floor with the ball and without the ball very, very quickly. He is a penetrator. He can penetrate. Uh, he gets into the paint and he's pretty good. I mean, he's not great, but he's pretty good passer. I mean, he's not a bad passer. He gets, uh, the ball to open players, uh, from the paint. So he's very quick. He gets in the lane and he can, he can do penetration and pass. Very good. Okay. Um, he's athletic, very athletic, uh, athletic uh, young boy. Um, he's six, five to six, seven, depending. I saw two different sites. He was six, five in high school. Now he's listed at six, six, seven. Maybe he grew. So let's assume he's six, seven, but they say he's 188 pounds. And I don't think so. He doesn't look like he's 180. He looks like he's more 175 uh, to me. And he's about six, seven, about 175, very thin, thin on the thin side, but he's very quick, gets in the lane, passes the ball. Well, he's very athletic. All right. A nice upper, um, vertical leap. Uh, all of that. Okay. So let's talk about the negatives. The most glaring negative is what he did when he went to the Australian league. First off, the Australian league, I think they play 30 games in their season and he was shelved. He was done after 15 games. He was their starting point guard for the New Zealand breakers. He played about 21 minutes a game and he hurt his hip. Now this is also a thing. Now, See, I know a, a lot of players bounce back from some of these injuries, but when you're talking, again, you have to look at this as if, you know, you're, you're the GM and you're going to be paying this kid. So is he going to be able to play or not? You know, a lot of people are asking me about Tilly over from Gonzaga. I, I'm going to take a risk on him. He's been hurt in college. College. He's hurt a lot. Like I said, he reminds me of a Jaguar I once owned. Beautiful car. Rose smooth as silk. But it spent more time in the garage than it did in my driveway. Okay, so that's what I'm, that, you know. So you gotta be careful with injuries. Like so, like for example, Kyrie Irving played one year at Duke, and he he missed half of that year because of a foot injury. It was a harbinger of things to come. As great as Kyrie Irving is, I don't think he's ever played a full season in the NBA, and I think he's got hurt at critical times in playoffs. So these things give you indications down the road. So this kid hurt his hip. And decided to sit out for the rest of the, came home after 15 games in New Zealand. I mean, he came home. Okay. He hurt his hip. He was the starting point guard when he was there. Um, this is the thing. Okay. So as the starting point guard, he averaged four assists. All right. He averaged four assists and three turnovers. Now he's in the New Zealand league. He averaged four assists and three turnovers. He couldn't get his shot off to, to, to shoot any type of accuracy. He shot 0.295, from three. 29.5%. Starting point guard. And to me, and even something more glaring, he shoots 68% from the foul line. This is your starting point guard. 68% from the, there's no defense on you. When you're shooting foul shots, 68% from the foul line, 29.5% from three, three turnovers and four assists. So the speed of the Australian league was a little too much for him. That the statistics show that he wasn't good on defense in the Australian league. He, he, he's a, I'll give him this. He's a willing defender. He's not somebody that doesn't care on defense. But he just, his footwork is terrible on defense. His footwork is terrible. When he did look good on defense, when he was utilizing his tremendous speed on defense, which he still has to learn to do. Um, he took 14 shots a game and shot 41% overall. He took five threes a game and would hit like one, one or two. That's why he only shot 29.5% from three. Uh, he took three foul shots a game and, and, and only shot 68%. I, I'm sorry, that's not, that's not good at all. Then he hurt his hip. So, and this is the thing about, play, this is what I'm saying about Kyra, Kyra Lewis or any small player that's very thin and slightly built. The NBA is a grind. It's a grind. So if a guy gets hurt in college or he gets hurt in a league like this, that's only playing 30 games and he can't even play the full season. 
Um, that raises a lot of questions about his durability. It raises a lot of questions about his durability. Okay. Um, okay. But so if you're going to draft RJ Hampton, he's 19. You're going to draft him as a project. He is, and for anybody thinking he should be drafted eight by the Knicks, you're, you're out of your mind. You're really out of your mind. You got players like a Vassell, Patrick Williams, Tyrese Maxey that can come in and play now. Okay, they can come in and play right now. They're all 19. They can come in and play right now. R.J. Hampton is talented. Don't get me wrong. Listen now. But he is not ready to play in the NBA. He is not ready to play in the NBA. Not this year. See, this is a kid really that should have went to college. I understand he went and got paid, but if he, he could have used, he could use two years of college. Look at John Morant. John Morant played two years of college and look at the difference between him and some of these other guys. I mean, that two, that second year in college, that pushed his game to another level. Okay. And made him ready for the NBA. So if you're drafting RJ Hampton, any team, and I hope the Knicks don't look at him because he's, there's too many better players that we can get that's ready now to play. Okay. But RJ Hampton is going to need at least a year in the G League. He's going to need at least a year in the G League. Okay. You're going to have to harness that speed so he can use it on defense. He's got good length, but he doesn't play good defense. His footwork is horrible. It's really bad. I'm going to put it to you this way. Iggy Brasdegas is 6'6", 225 pounds. And I've already said in the previous video, Iggy could guard fours and he can guard some threes. He cannot guard twos. RJ Hampton's a point guard. He's six, seven, right? If, if, if they played a game against each other, like if you put the New Zealand breakers against the Westchester Knicks and Iggy had to guard Hampton and Hampton had to guard Iggy, Iggy would destroy this boy. I mean, he would destroy him. On defense, all Iggy would do is back up and make him go left because the boy has no left hand. RJ Hampton has no left hand. None. And when he does go left, he shoots with his right hand. Okay? He'd make him go left. He'd back up off him because he's only shooting 29.5% from three. So he wouldn't have to worry about his speed. And then if RJ Hampton had to guard Braz Degas, he'd make Braz Degas look like Chris Mullen. I mean, it would be embarrassing. And, and Braz Degas just spent a year in the G League. And some of you are talking about drafting this kid in the lottery and, and, and playing him with RJ. Where's the spacing at 29 and a half percent from three in the Australian league? Where's the spacing? There is none. We're trying to create space for RJ. Okay. We're trying to create space for him. Where is it when this kid can't shoot? And where is it when he can't guard? He can't guard your point guard. One of the things defensively. Okay, defensively in the NBA. And then, and not just the NBA, even go back to high school. What you don't want defensively, if you don't want anybody to get down the middle of the floor in the paint, you don't want that. That's the, that's the cardinal sin. And in fact, one, one of the things that Tibbs is excellent at doing on all the teams he, he coaches, they do not allow players to penetrate from the top of the key directly into the paint. They, they try to push them to the side. They're not letting them get into the paint like that. RJ Hampton can't play that position. He would be, he would be getting beat all the time defensively. Okay. I don't know what people are looking at in terms of telling me this guy's the next whoever. He's got speed. He's got athletic ability. He's raw, very raw. He's going to need at least a year in the G League, maybe two, but he is not. He repeat, he is not ready for the NBA. Okay. He needs to be, uh, he needs the body to develop a little bit. And I'm thinking this hip injury, maybe due to the fact that he's so young in that grind. See, a lot of times people don't understand the NBA grind. You need to have something on you. Your body, 19 year olds, 18 year olds, you know, a lot of times are not ready for that. And that's why you see them getting hurt a lot. You see them getting hurt a lot because they're teenagers playing with men. All right. Just because a guy can jump and dunk doesn't mean he can play with men, professional men. So RJ Hampton, my overall assessment is he's not ready for the NBA. He's just not. Okay. I, I hate to break it to all y'all that's so high on him. And, and I'm not saying he can't 
you know, in three or four years, develop into a good NBA player. Right now, if you drafted him right now, he is not ready to play in the NBA. He got he, He's a guy that you're going to send to the G League and you're going to develop him. OK, and, and you're going to hope that you can harness that speed and that athleticism and that maybe he can develop a jump shot. Because what I saw on his jump shot, what was scary, see, sometimes you see a guy's jump shot, right? Like Lonzo Ball had the, one of the ugliest jump shots in college you ever saw, right? And he came to the NBA and, and he showed he couldn't shoot. He he changed his shot and he's shooting a lot better this past season, 100 percent better, much improved jump shot from our uh, from uh, Le- Lonzo Ball. And so you're hoping that a guy can do that. But sometimes when the guy has good mechanics on the jump shot and still missing it, sometimes they just can't shoot. Like nothing's wrong with Elfin Payton's form when he shoots. He just can't shoot. And the same with RJ Hampton. He, he plants his feet well and he gets his, his nice form. His arm is in a nice spot, but he just can't shoot, man. He just can't. And I'm thinking it's the speed of the Australian game. He wasn't used to that coming out of high school. High school is a whole different thing than when you go to a pro league. And then the NBA, I mean, yeah, no. Mm -mm. This young man needs a year or two in the G League. He is not ready for the NBA. And and please, Knicks, don't even look at this kid at eight. Not nah. And and in the 27, with guys like Desmond Bain, Tyler Bay. Malachi Flynn, Paul Reed, all of these guys are better than him. All of them. Okay. Even you look at J- Jemias Ramsey, who I'm not real high on, he's better than him. All of these guys are better than, and than, than RJ Hampton right now. At least like with Devin Vassell or, or, or Desmond Bain, they're ready to play in the NBA right now. They're ready to play in the NBA right now. Vassell is an elite defender. Not just good. He's elite on the defensive end. Okay. And he has a beautiful jump shot. So he's ready. He shot 42% at Florida State last year. He's another guy that came back for a sophomore year. A lot of these guys can do that. I understand the lure of the money because you get first round, you're going to get guaranteed money. And I hope RJ makes his money. Okay. But I don't want him on Knicks. Mm -mm. No, no, sir. Don't be, please don't come up talking about him and RJ. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. He's not ready for the NBA. He really is not. He needs another year in the G League. I would take him from Australia because I think the kid was homesick because he left right away uh, when he when he hurt his hip. He left right away. And I think he was homesick. Come back to the States. Feel more comfortable here probably. I can understand that. So he might be better off playing in the G League for a year and get himself some development um, and some good coaching uh, before you start to talk about him being ready to come to the NBA. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to disappoint you, but I got to be real with y'all. If you're talking about RJ Hampton and Nick, you, you got to be out of your mind. I mean, I don't know what you're looking at, but he can't shoot. He can't defend. He had trouble defending against us in the Australian league. And you think he could defend in the NBA? He had trouble shooting in the Australian and foul shots. How could you shoot? You're a point guard. You're shooting 68% from the line. Come on, man. Come on. No, no, no. This kid needs time. Give him his time, but he's not ready for the NBA. And please, I don't even want the Knicks to interview this kid. Okay, stop. All right? Tell me what you think. Shalom.